know all you need to know about traditional term insurance, but do you know that there's now a way to buy term insurance that can actually pay you while you're still living? We're Michael and Shannon with Healthcare Genius, and we're here to tell you all you need to know about healthcare and retirement. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and to click the bell to be notified when we come out with new videos. I'll tell you a story about a friend of mine in 2016 who was diagnosed with stomach cancer. He um, went uh, to his doctors here in uh, Denver and they gave him a treatment, but they also recommended that he go down to MD Anderson to get a second opinion. Basically suggested some experimental treatments that uh, they were seeing was having a effect on his type of cancer. However, it was not covered under his health insurance. Price of about 250000 is what uh, his cost would be uh, out of pocket to pay for those treatments. Fortunately, his agent had sold him a policy like this, term insurance with living benefits. So he went to the insurance company, kind of gave them his records. They came back and uh, essentially told them that they would give him the 250000 out of his million dollar policy to cover that uh, uh, procedures down uh, in Texas. So that's a great example of why somebody would want a policy like the one we're talking about. But I have a couple questions to ask you. So what would happen to you if you got really sick like Michael's friend and you needed treatment that was outside of where you were covered at somewhere like MD Anderson or Mayo is another common one that we see where people really want treatment from a particular place but that place just isn't covered under their health insurance. Another common thing that we see particularly with cancer is that there are different what they would call experimental treatments that may be the best option for you but unfortunately aren't covered by traditional health insurance. The second question I have for you is if something should happen to you what happens if you can't work? Now you may have disability insurance like a lot of us do but one thing to keep in mind is that disability insurance doesn't cover 100% of your income. Generally, if it's covered by your employer, it's about 50 or 60% of your income. And for a lot of people, that's just not enough. So when you put that on top of your treatment costs for whatever you have going on in your life, it can be a really difficult situation. Yes, yeah, Shannon, not to mention a lot of times the spouse will have to come help uh, or go travel to uh, the different treatment facility. So they're also missing work uh, in a lot of cases. The third question I have for you is what if you require long-term care? Now you might wonder what long-term care is. It's really connected to what we call activities of daily living. So if you're either in an accident or if you have a cognitive impairment, if something happens and you are no longer able to do things like bathe or to dress yourself, you're probably going to need additional care that your family can't give you around the clock. And so if you need any of those things, where are you going to get them? How are you going to pay for them? So these types of term insurance policies are really the least expensive way that a family can protect themselves from the unexpected. Uh, when we use the word term, that really just refers to how long the premium is guaranteed on these products. So some have annual renewable uh, premiums, so they're going to be the least expensive, but they're going to go up each year. That's right. Um, then we have five-year, 10-year, 20, and even 30-year level premiums where those premiums will stay the same, guaranteed for that uh, entire period. Uh, when it comes to the 30-year products, we're actually seeing a lot of people in their 40s and early 50s purchasing those so that they have coverage through their uh, 70s and 80s. It uh, tends to be a, a way to uh, to protect again against the unexpected once you're retired. Now, traditional term insurance, which is what most people are used to, is more inclined to cover something that happens to you if you were to die. Uh, so they're gonna pay your family a benefit if, if you pass away. The uh, most common type of coverage is at uh, your employer. So a lot of employers will provide $50,000 of life insurance coverage to their employees. The government gives them a tax break. They can deduct that, but then you don't have to pay income tax on that uh, premium. So it's a really nice benefit. Uh, these types of products, though, as we said, most of the time don't have a living benefit like the ones that we're talking about, but they are uh, convenient and sometimes they're guaranteed issues. So there's no exams or fiscals you have to go through. And there are a few different reasons why people buy term insurance. If people want life insurance, one, it is the cheapest. Some people buy it because they want to cover funeral expenses should they pass away. A lot of times those employer policies that are $50,000, 
that's really all that they'll pay for. But other people buy them if they have a family, for example, and they pass away, they wanna make sure that their family is taken care of. Some people, if they are the major earner of income, they wanna have income replacement. One thing that we're seeing that's more and more common is for stay-at-home parents to have life insurance policies for themselves. There are a lot of things that a stay-at-home parent is doing that will cost the other parent should that person pass away. Child care is a huge one, and so we'll see term policies that people will get for themselves until their kids are out of high school, for example. So living benefits, now that we know what they are, they're benefits that you can receive from a life insurance policy before you die. What are some of the common living benefits? And the first one that we wanna talk about today is critical illness. Critical illness is things like heart attack, stroke, cancer, kidney failure or kidney disease, and organ transplants. Should one of these things happen to you, you could generally receive up to 90% of whatever the death benefit is for your life insurance policy. So for example, if I had a life insurance policy, it was a term policy and the death benefit was a million dollars. If I was diagnosed with cancer, I could receive up to $900,000 out of that death benefit to pay for whatever I need to, whether it's experimental treatment or to go to a different facility or to supplement income that I'm losing because I can't work. If I get sick, I'm entitled to a large portion of that death benefit. Well, and what's really interesting too, Shannon, we're even seeing critical injury policies will pay if you were uh, in an accident, if you were burned or uh, per you had paralysis and those types of things. The second thing that we want to mention is chronic illness. These are things that are, like we mentioned long-term care earlier, that are also connected to activities of daily living. If you get in an accident and you have a cognitive impairment, for example, and you're having trouble doing some of those activities of daily living, dressing, bathing, taking medications, things like that, then you will receive a benefit. And the way that these benefits generally work is you can receive up to 24% of the death benefit per year until the death benefit is exhausted. So for example, if I was in a car accident and I was having some cognitive impairment issues, if I had a million dollar death benefit, I could receive $240,000 per year, every year that I have those disabilities until the death benefit is exhausted. And the third thing that we want to mention is terminal illness, and so that would be um, where you'd receive a benefit if you have less than either 12 or 24 months to live. So for all three of these things, again, you know, it depends on what the policy is, but these are some of the common things that we see. And, and the question a lot of times people ask is, well, how much do I need? You know, what's, what's the amount of insurance? There's a rule of thumb out there that between 10 and 20 times your earnings are what you should have in death benefit as far as insurance policies go. It's all going to be dependent on your age, where you've got family, what your responsibilities are. Obviously, we see business owners who have tens of millions of dollars of coverage. Maybe they have a loan out or, or maybe uh, it's a buy-sell agreement with a partner. There's not a guaranteed rule of thumb of what the right way is. That's right, and for a policy like the one that we're talking about, we're seeing people that weren't necessarily interested in the traditional policies that are now interested in the policies with living benefits. My mother's a perfect example. She doesn't have any dependents and she didn't really see a need for some of the reasons that we've talked about that people would need traditional uh, term insurance. When I brought up living benefits, this was a really affordable way for her to protect against things like critical illness and accident, long-term care that she otherwise wouldn't be able to. And so that was actually the primary reason for her interest in the policy. And so different things like that will determine how much coverage you actually need. Yeah, and Shannon, I, I know my uh, wife, um, her mother has been, uh, had a number of illnesses and her stepfather takes care of her. And she's been worried that if something happened to her stepfather, uh, you know, what would she do? So she uh, purchased a policy on her stepfather that she'll use uh, if something happens to then support her mother from uh, long distance, make sure that she's taken care of. How does this all fit into health insurance? Like we mentioned earlier, there are things that you can use these policies for that health insurance won't cover. 
But in addition to that, having a policy with living benefits could actually impact how you're choosing your health insurance plans. I'm a good example of this. I'm young, I'm healthy, but I do always worry about the what if. So in the past, I always tended to choose health insurance plans that have a low deductible because I always thought, you know, what happens if I get in an accident? I don't wanna pay thousands and thousands of dollars. I wanna be protected. By choosing the, these plans, I wasn't able to contribute to my HSA and I never really used the plans because I don't really go to the doctor very often, but I was so scared of the what if. So now that I have a term insurance policy with living benefits, I was able to go back and the next time I looked at health insurance, I said, okay, I can get the high deductible plan, I can contribute to my HSA, I can save money on my health insurance because I don't have to worry about the what if. If you have an insurance policy today, what we would encourage you to do is look at that policy and see if you have living benefits. If you do have a term policy and you don't have living benefits, the good news is that in most cases, you can actually replace that policy with a term policy with living benefits and it's pretty simple to do. Now, if your employer is the one who pays for that term policy, you could go to your HR department or your employer and talk to them about why this might be a better option for them. And Shannon, you know, another nice thing about these new types of policies, and a lot of it has to do with technology, is in the past, you used to have to get a, uh, an exam, you'd have to have a paramed come out to your house, they would draw blood, they would ask you a lot of questions. Uh, they still ask you questions, but um, in most cases, a lot of these insurance companies don't require that uh, all the way up to a million uh, dollars of coverage. So if you think that a policy like this might be right for you and you wanna become a client, feel free to go down to our description and click on the link. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more information about healthcare and retirement. Thank you.